Good evening and welcome. I'm Sam Kim, one of the pastors here at Burbank First UMC. And no, I'm not going to deliver a sermon tonight. Woo! <laughs> hey. Show's already started. I, I just want to say I feel honored and thankful. I'm honored that we're able to host Holy Cows here tonight, and I feel thankful. But I can't thank everyone by name. There are too many, and you'll know most of the people here in this illustrious and talented group of individuals. So I want to take a moment to thank a group of people and an individual. And the group of people is all of you. Thank you for your presence and your donations. Whether it's the choir or dance or more shows like this, your support will go towards supporting the arts here at Burbank First UMC. So not only are you going to be blessed tonight, but you're going to be a blessing to others. So thank you so much. For your time. And the individual I'd like to thank is the producer, the co-director, and the co-writer of this show, Carolyn English. <laughs> Carolyn's had words and ideas and a will, and tonight we're able to see them all come to life. So I'll hand it over to Carol. Oh, thank you. You know, there's nothing more wonderful than creating art with your friends and then being able to share it with your friends. We are so grateful that you are here as our audience. Now, remember, the fundraising doesn't end with your ticket. We have peanuts and Cracker Jacks <laughs> and candy cowtails. Yeah. And if you haven't seen them, we have beautiful quilts with baseball themes that have been donated that are in the back. So please check all of that out. Keep that fundraising going. And now, please whip out your cell phone. Turn it off. <laughs> Unwrap those candies <laughs> and begin to enter the magical world of live theater. Please rise and remove your hats for the singing of our national anthem. <laughs> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so It's co-ed church softball league, but it's still the game. Stepping up to the plate alone, there's something about taking responsibility for your actions that's appealing. Or sacrificing, making it out to help the team, only in baseball. It's a home run or a strikeout and 50 things in between. And it's a simple game. Everyone understands the rules. You know, I'm the one who came up with our team name. The Holy Cows? It's cute, don't you think? My husband, Carl, who's the pastor here in Credence, wanted to name us the Martyrs. 
I talked him out of that because let's face it, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> However, since we have lost every game, maybe he was right. <laughs> oh, here I am chattering away. I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Marlis Brooks, the pastor's wife. Carl loves my name. He says he knew the moment we met I was going to be his wife. He tells everyone, this is my Marlis. She's perfect. Marlis, get it? Less Mars, less imperfections, less dents, less problems, hence, less Mars. Marlis, me. I know he's proud of me, and he means it in a loving way, but it has always bothered me a lot because I'm not perfect. I'm not less Mars. And lately, frankly, I've been struggling. There seems to be so many questions, so much loss. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be staring at you. It's a habit I've gotten into over the years, singing in the church choir. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love the singing and the music, but you're stuck up there in plain view, and everyone can see you. No sleeping during the sermon. <laughs> so today is the last game, the last chance. Oh, it's the Tobin sisters, Luann and Dot. Always the first to arrive, never married, lived here in Credence all their lives, bless their hearts. They took care of their mother until she passed away at 93. It must have been wonderful for her to know she had someone to take care of her. I am grateful to Luann and Dot for being the first ones to be here for me that day when... Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Now's not the time. Right now, while I have a moment, I'm going to get a cup of tea and a cookie or two. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks, 
going overhand. Woo-wee, it'll be Katie bar the door. All right, you go ahead and joke all you want, but in my 20 years of professional baseball, Skipper, I... Skipper! In your 20 years of selling janitorial supplies to the Minnesota Twins does not make you an expert on baseball. <laughs> to heck it don't. supposed to pray to win because what if the other team prays to win then how would God decide? <laughs> but since I had to go all the way across town to get a raspberry cream long john from the donut barn and they were out, I feel that God owes me a big one. So I did it. I prayed we'd win. Oh, there I said it. <laughs> oh, oh, Luann, is that what I think it is? That true value Jimmy Dean collector's cup thing? <laughs> oh, oh, Nancy, dear, where's Marlis? Didn't she ride to the game with you? I stopped by her house, but she was busy talking on the phone. Long distance. Mm. Long distance? Oh, that poor dear. These last two years have been such a trial for her. First Ruthie, and now this business with Elizabeth. Oh, Ruthie, what a shame. Oh. What a tragedy. Oh. Yes, but we really do need Marlis here today. We need to make a decision on those choir robes. No. What decision? We decide them choir robes are to be black. Black? Oh, oh. no, I prefer peach. What's wrong with blue? Oh, blue? Blue won't mesh with the hunter green carpet we put in last fall. Well, too. Well, not. Well, too oh. much. Oh, red. How about red? Red would be so Red's the color of a harlot's brassiere. <laughs> Forget them choir robes. God don't care if you sing naked. Where's Marlis? I need to talk to Marlis. It's very important. Rain to break a drought important. You too, Grandma Fetty. It's Marlis this, Marlis that. Everyone's always needing Marlis. Doesn't anybody care about this game? Sure we do. We're here, aren't we? Yeah, even though we've lost every game this year. See, but that's the point. If we could win this last game, we could still qualify for the Holy Doom Saints Sudden Death Consolation Co-Ed Softball Game at the Coliseum. Oh, Skipper! <laughs> Connie Mac, I think the captains want the lineups. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, fellas. I don't have my lineup yet. Uh, go, holy cows! Move! Lord, that was inspirational. Where is he? Hey, Skipper, I've got all the stats you asked for to made up a great new lineup. Stats? Oh, 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 pistachios. You brought us the pistachios. Hey, everybody, Jimmy brought us some pistachios. Thank goodness you are here. They want a new lineup. Don't worry, Skipper. I have it all worked out. We'll start off with Carl. He's got the best on base percentage. We'll follow him off with Perry. He made contact and can move our offense and can get our offense moving right away. Next is Gary. He's a good bunter and has good back control. Then we'll bring up our sluggers to drive in some runs. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and are ready for this? Amy! As you can see, I have the rest of your stats and a brief analysis on each player. Great job, Jimmy. Great job. I gotta go, Skipper, I'm the third base coach for the game. Sure. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I, 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 I'm the third base coach. Oh, <laughs> About that, management felt that since we haven't won a game all year, a change was in order. See ya! <laughs> well, 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 don't you ladies worry about a thing. I'm going to go out there on the field and show them how it's done. I've got um, Carl, Carl batting first because he's, he's first. Then i got to Leviticus and numbers. He has good numbers. Then... Judge Jonah Job Deuteronomy, or is it Jonah Judge? I, I, uh, Amy, that's it. Amy, I got it all right here. I gotta, I, I gotta go. That was pitiful. That boy is simply pitiful. Excuse me. Has anyone seen my mom? Well, well, Elizabeth. What a surprise. When did you get out of the joint? Rehab? Oh, is that what it's called these days? 
Jesus. So, Elizabeth dear, when do you start your community service? Well, Grandma Fetty, dear, I'm here, aren't I? Got any toilets you need scrubbed? Oh, is that why you're here? Nah, my community service is to repaint the Dairy Queen. Oh, what? Wait, we don't have a Dairy Queen. I know. I've got to build it first. <gasps> you do? But what? That would take... Oh, I get it. You're just kidding, right? I should have known I couldn't fool you guys. <laughs> the truth is, the Chamber of Commerce has asked me to host the new gay welcome wagon. <gasps> oh, super! We need more happy people in Creed. Lizard, I thought that was you. Of course it's her. Who else would dress like that around here, except maybe Halloween? Gosh, I'm glad to see you. Thanks, Squirt. Believe me, you are the only one. You're staying for the game, aren't you? Oh. Well, the game means a lot to you, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. We can't let the Baptist beat us. I see. That would be a fate worse than death. Well, come on to the dugout with me. I've got a great can plan I've worked on, and I'd like to show it to you. Tell my mom I've been shanghaied by Abner Doubleday. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth can be just a darling. He's such a dear. Such a loser. <gasps> loser is rather harsh. Loser! <gasps> We'll, we'll pray, pray for, for her. <laughs> Who's Abner Doubleday? Oh. Perfect! The game's about to start! The oh. game is about to start! <laughs> Will everyone please rise for the pre-game prayer? You're saved by the pre-game prayer. Hello! I am Deacon Royal Crank of the local three and a half square church. Oh no, not this guy. Lord, as we gather here on this field of dreams, we ask your blessings on this game of softball. There will be winners and there will be losers, but we know with you there are no losers in the game of life. Except you. Lord, help us today to recognize the importance of teamwork. Help us be part of a winning team, just as you have the perfect team with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is so corny. And help us in this game as in life to stand up and not be afraid of the hard balls thrown at us. And if we should be hit by a wild pitch, let us forgive and use that time for a closer walk with thee. And if we feel the urge to steal, let it only be in the game of softball. Uh. And finally, Lord, as we round the bases for home, help us to remember our eternal home. Rest with you. I'm going to send you to your eternal home in another minute. <laughs> <laughs> and one last pitch. Please remember everyone to attend the all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner fundraiser next Sunday. Amen. Oh! Children under 12 are free with a paying adult. Amen! Amen! Play ball! Play ball is right. Let's finally win one, huh? Go, holy cow! Go, holy cow! Here we go, Carl! Come on, big guy, let's go! Move, 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 move! Strike! That ball was 20 feet outside! Get a clue, Um. Get a clue! Move, 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 move! Strike two! That ball was so high, King Kong would need a ladder! You're blind in one eye, um, and you can't see out of the other! Oh, oh, perhaps you need corrected laser eye surgery! Uh, it's painless, and it's an outpatient procedure! Oh, you get a video to take home with you! Uh, I had it done, and it's super! Nancy! Yes? Shut up! All right! Move, 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 move! Strike three? Great 
off to another brilliant start. <gasps> It's in the Bible. Not in my Bible. <laughs> Marlis, when did you get? Oh, Marlis, oh, Marlis, Marlis, red or blue? What? Oh, red or blue? No, 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 no peach, peach, peach. Marlis, this is important. I gave my recipe for marvelous meatless casserole to Connie Trimble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one with the thinly sliced zucchini? Well, everyone knows that's the secret that makes it mine. Mm -hmm. And she had the nerve to serve it at her church circle group and claim it was her recipe. That's wrong, oh. right? That's wrong, oh. right? Marlis, Jimmy and I came up with this line up for today's game. I want you to take a look at it. What do you think? We got Carl Benton, Mr. Gary, and Gary, and Mike. Enough! Right? 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 <sighs> Too much. I had to stop that for a moment. I'm sure you can understand. And don't get me wrong, I, I honestly don't mind people coming to me with their problems. I'm flattered, amazed, really, but not today. Today, I need some direction. Who's here to help me? My husband, Carl, is a, a good man, a wonderful person to talk to, but he's always so busy with other people doing, doing your work. I need someone now right now. Maybe it's my daughter Elizabeth arriving home unexpectedly from her rehab. Oh, by the way, did I mention my beautiful youngest child goes by the charming nickname Lizard now. <laughs> anyway, Elizabeth is back home from rehab. Isn't rehab an awful word? It reminds me of that green pinstripe lounge chair we had recovered in floral. <laughs> no, wait. I'm thinking of reupholstery. It, it doesn't matter. It's changing something and not making it better. Wouldn't the time spent in rehab be better called a month of elegance? Like a spa? Yeah, like a court-appointed spa. But I am thankful that she is back. I am so good at helping others. Please give me the wisdom to help her. I guess I should be getting back. I just needed this break. This is a very bad day for me. This is the second anniversary of Ruthie's death. And that is so hard and painful for me to even say that. Okay. I'm back. Well, well blue. The robes should be blue. It reflects the color, tranquility, and life-giving forces of the sea and the endless reaches of the sky, symbolizing God's never-ending love. Oh, my goodness. And it doesn't hurt they're overstocked on blue, and we can get a discount. <laughs> what about my recipe? Connie Trimble stole it. Everyone knows it. And that's your answer. This is a small town. Everyone knows that's your recipe. Mm -hmm. Sliced zucchini is your calling card. No one can think of sliced zucchini without thinking of you. Take the high road. It's a compliment that your cooking skills are so exceptional that others would risk eternal damnation to call one of your recipes their own. Eternal damnation? That's fair. <laughs> Marlis, Marlis, do you know We got to win this last game, don't we? We can't lose every game, can we, Marlis? Skipper, are you aware that baseball is eternal? Huh? E eternal? All other games. Football, hockey, basketball are ruled by a clock. The clock runs down. Tick, 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 and end of game, game over. But baseball, baseball is different. Baseball has no clock. In theory, the game could last forever. I never thought of that before. So? So get the large jumbo size box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> oh, 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 get the out of the package! Oh! oh. Well, he dropped the ball. But it looks like we got ourselves a new soprano for the choir. <laughs> I'll tell you what really hurts. We're down three to nothing. I cannot believe we are this bad. Marlis, do you know that? Yes, Nancy. I know Elizabeth is here. That's why I'm late getting to the game. 
Well, did you get a chance to talk to her? Not really. I was hoping Elizabeth and I could really talk, but there just wasn't enough time. Oh, it seems so distant sometimes, Nancy. Something's wrong, but I honestly don't know what it is. I'm glad she's at least back. It's been hard on me without a child in the house. She doesn't say much. Isn't she hard to talk to? I mean, she's kind of weird. Oh, uh, I mean, weird in a super way. Super weird. No. Uh, it's all right. It's all right, Nancy. I know what you mean. Elizabeth has been withdrawn and quiet since the accident. Her big sister's death changed all of us. Ruthie was more than a big sister to Elizabeth. Ruthie was 10 years older and in some ways was more of a mother to her than even I was. Oh, Nancy, they were so close. Elizabeth was only 14. That is young to lose someone you love so much. The timing was so wrong. Oh, oh I know what you mean. Timing is everything. Last week, the church asked me to make four loaves of banana bread for May Melancar's funeral, so I scoot on over to the food bowl because they always have overripe bananas. I mean, they even bag them and sell them for a dollar a bag. But the day I went and really needed banana bread bananas, all they had were green bananas. I mean, can you believe it? How do you make banana bread with green bananas? I mean, talk about bad timing. <laughs> not fair? I'll tell you what's not fair. Not fair is a parent outliving a child. Not fair is losing a beautiful 24-year-old daughter just as she is beginning her life. Ruthie was my firstborn, and she was a beautiful baby. She never cried. She never cried. A parent could not ask for a more perfect child. She had this Cinderella hair, long, flowing, golden curls. And one summer, she decided she was going to be an Olympic swimmer, and she cut off all her hair. <laughs> but she made it work. Ruthie always made things work. And she was even more beautiful because you could see her face. And it wasn't a, a Miss America face. It was a face of character and grace. And she did place third in the state finals. And two years ago, her life ended. We had just gone to Marlis's home for tea. Carl, Marlis's husband, was home early for lunch. He was in a good mood because he had just finished signing the paperwork that would start construction on the Christian Education Building. But he had left the top off his pen so that when he put it back in his shirt pocket, it bled through. He was hoping Marlis could get the stain out while he was home for lunch. So when the phone rang, we were all annoyed that Carl didn't pick it up. I mean, after all, he knew that we were having tea and that Marlis had her hands full getting that stain out, but it just rang and rang. Finally, Marlis grabbed it. It slipped through her soapy fingers. It clattered to the floor. It startled her. She picked it up again. It was Peter, Nancy's husband. Peter is a highway patrolman. Marlis looked so serious. We couldn't hear anything that was going on in that conversation, but as soon as Marlis hung up the phone, she told us what had happened. Her Ruthie was gone. Ruthie had been driving home from a teaching conference at Huron University with her fiance, Tim. Tim was a good young man, and he loved Ruthie so much. It had been raining heavily that morning, which was unusual for late July. The two young men in the other car hit Ruthie's car head on. None of them had a chance. It was a simple thing, really. The two young men were late because of the rain and they were stuck behind a semi. 
No one travels that old road, and I'm sure they thought they could pass safely. Why? Why did God put them all in the same place on that road at the same time? The boys were rushing because they were out of time, and Tim and Ruthie were on that road because they had extra time. That one horrible moment impacted so many lives. It's been two years, and I'm still struggling. Where are my answers? How many times have I played that day over and over and over again in my mind? Five more seconds making the bed, one more cup of coffee, one less cup of coffee, either car going one mile per hour faster or slower, the conference ending one second later, one second, anything, anything to change that one hellish moment in time, your time, why? Is this a test? Your will? Your plan that we mortals can't understand? If this is your master plan, part of me can accept that. My sanity, fine. I'm left to cry out from the bottom of my soul in agony at my loss and never know why. I'm, I'm strong enough for that, I, I am. But I'm not strong enough if I don't know. If I don't know you're even there. My faith is slipping, not my obedience, my faith. I feel it slipping further and further into darkness, and it frightens me. A week ago, on TV, I saw this preacher begging for money. He told his viewers that if they didn't send in $10,000 in the next hour, God told him he was going to die. I need $10,000, children, or the Lord has told me I'm going to die. The Lord will take me home right here on this very television show. Make your pledge or the Lord will strike me down. <laughs> I watched that show. I was gripped by it, actually, hoping no one would send in one nickel. <laughs> I wanted the hour to end and the money not pledged. I wanted that preacher struck by a bolt of lightning, or whatever it is you use these days. And not that I particularly hated the guy, although his hairpiece was annoying. <laughs> no. I wanted to see you in action. Show me something. Let me know you're there. You exist. Anyway. Of course, the pledges came in. There's always someone who ruins it for everyone. <laughs> he raised his money and lived to preach another day, same time, same channel. And I didn't get to see you at work. And that's my problem. I simply must know you exist. Otherwise, what's left of my faith will crack. I can feel it. And I I'm not angry. I don't expect all my prayers to be answered. I mean, after all, sometimes the answer is no. But it's been two years, and I should be over the pain by now, but I'm not, and it's causing me to doubt, and I'm getting more and more scared. It's a confusing, terrible, very troubling feeling, and I want it stopped. So I am praying to you for help. I accept your will, but I must have a sign you exist. Come on. You've done it before. The burning bush and all that. Well, that's what I want. I need a sign. Is that too much to ask? I don't care if it is. You owe me. And if you do exist, you know the pain that has caused me to start to lose my mind and drive me to this request. A sign. A sign. Something, something irrefutable, like something impossible, like, like the holy cows winning this softball game. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't expect that. Even you have limits. No, you're God, you have no limits. 
You created the heavens and the earth, part of the Red Sea. I'm not going to make this easy on you. If you exist, the holy cows will win their game. There. I said it. Okay? Okay. That's the deal. And I'm sorry if you think this isn't fair, but you are God. <laughs> about things like that, Marlis. Oh, oh, these beards are super. Skipper, what happened? Those heathens loaded the bases. Marlis, weren't you watching? I was talking to someone. All right, they loaded the bases, then they hit the ball at the center field, and Matthew misplayed it, of course. Of course. But it went off Matthew's head right into Luke's glove for an out. I hope Matthew's all right. I hope the ball's all right. Hush up, women folk. I'm talking ball. Anyway, the base runners are laughing. Al Moen is laughing so hard he splits his pants. Oh, that's not a pretty sight. Now, Al won't run to first base because he's embarrassed, and Luke runs in, trips over his feet, falls on the base. A double play! A double play, Marcus! That's the first one the holy cows have ever gotten. I'm so glad I lived long enough to see it. Pull yourself together. Are we ahead? I knew that new defensive lineup I put in was going to be a good one. I put Skipper. Matthew in center, but I was going to put him in right field. What? Are we winning? Are the holy cows winning? Oh, no. We're getting killed. It's six to nothing, bottom of the seven. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Seventh inning stretch. Super. The Lutheran hot dog stand is open. I'm going to go get me a dog. Me two. <laughs> me three. Me four. Well, I'm going to go to the ladies' restroom. And this time, I'm prepared. I brought my own. That cheap paper they use here, they can keep for themselves and use it for next year's phone book. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till it's over. Take me out to the ball game. <laughs> trust a Lutheran hot dog. <laughs> if it ain't a Methodist potluck casserole, it's just not worth the bother. Amen. Give it, Ellie. No. I'm going to give it to the pitcher. No. I'm going to give it to the back. I love pitcher. watching those two no. play. They make quite the team. Oh, they remind me of Ruthie and Elizabeth. Yes, they really do enjoy being together. By the way, where is Elizabeth? I thought she was going to sit with us. I haven't seen her since we rode over together. Oh, 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 well, she's probably so busy, you know, busy visiting, catching up. Uh, she's been gone a while. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, that's probably it. <clears throat> well, super! <laughs> Did I see what I think I just saw? Or Amy just got her first hit, but Marlis, I guess she got confused and ran to third the wrong way. That's not good. 
No, that's that not is good. not good. Oh, bless her heart. She just got excited, that's all. You did good, honey. Keep your head up. You, no, Amy, don't cry, Amy, dear. You'll do better next time. Oh, there isn't going to be a next time. Grandma Fetty, what do you mean? Well, it's the top of the eighth, and the score is six to nothing. Hmm. Six to nothing, top of the eighth. Say, Marla's child, you seem mighty interested all of a sudden. You got a bet riding on this game. <laughs> hey, you guys, stop laughing at us. Marla's the other team is laughing at us. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever I mean, Mama, me, it's such uh, you. Blue, God! You tell them, kids! Oh, that's good. It's too good. God help us. We've got a couple of little brats defending our honor. Oh, Jimmy and Ellie, come on over here by your Aunt Luann and Don. Yeah, give us the old folks some sugar. <laughs> you know, watching you kids play reminds me of growing up with my five sisters on a farm just outside Credence. I didn't know you had other sisters. <gasps> oh, yes, farm families are large families. I have five older sisters and an older brother. There's a 20 year age difference between my oldest sister and me. So, you're the baby? Ain't you sweet? No, Dot's the baby. <laughs> But people always think I'm younger. <laughs> I'm sure aunts are as well as multiple. Oh, oh, you kids are so good. Oh. <laughs> and she can't cook. All we get to eat is beans and meanies. Oh, well, well, I can bake a cherry pie. Does that sound good? Well, as long as we can say beans and weenies. <laughs> oh, you. Rascals are just full of vinegar, aren't you? Just like we were when we were young. <laughs> you were young? What? <laughs> well, of course, sweetheart. Did you get to see any real dinosaurs? Uh, no, dear. <laughs> Why don't you youngsters go off and play now and have fun? Okay. okay. In, in traffic. <laughs> uh, those kids sure are a caution, aren't they? Precious gifts is what they are. Precious <laughs> gifts. <laughs> Sister, do you ever wonder what it might have been like being married? Well, you had your chances. I did. With whom? What about Claude Riddler? He was sweet on you. Claude Riddler? The fellow from the pharmacy who made deliveries on his bicycle? Uh -huh. The bicycle with the mud flaps? The very one. Oh, Luann, please. Claude meant well, but he certainly wasn't what I would consider husband material. He, he was nice enough, but really nothing more than a, a, a pleasant vegetable. Oh. <laughs> oh, you are right. Not much chance of finding Mr. Wright in this small town. Yeah. Or even Mr. Close enough. <laughs> I guess, sister, that we are just a couple of old maids. Yes. <laughs> I would have liked to have children of my own, but that horse is out of the barn, run off, and never coming back. <laughs> I know, sister. Oh, sometimes it hurts so badly. I mean, men have it so easy. First of all, they don't have maternal instinct pumping in their veins like the never-ending rhythm of a jackhammer. I mean, when their biological clock ends, they're dead. Oh. We women have a shelf life about as long as a bottle of milk in the August sun. Oh. But when I think of the love I had for Mama and she had for me, I would have liked to have had a child of my own to share that love with. I know that losing a child must be a horrible pain, but I really wonder if it's as painful as never having had a child. That's a bunch of crap! Get some bifocal spectacles, you baboon! Grandma Betty, what's wrong? That dang blasted umpire just called Titus out! But he swung and missed the three straight pitches. So what? <laughs> It's the bottom of the eighth. We're down six to nothing. Don't we get some good old-fashioned Christian mercy? Uh -huh. We should get, well, four 
four strikes at least. I think the only mercy we're going to get is that this game will be over soon. Oh, well, but it's only the top of the ninth inning. I mean, how many innings are there? Nine. Oh. It ain't over till it's over. Well, at least it's just six to nothing. That's the best the holy cows have ever done. Sure beats that 42 to one heartbreaker last week. Oh, last week. Those dirty Congregationalists used ringers. They played their preacher, Jim Crawley. He played high school baseball. But that was 70 years ago. Preacher Crawley's 86 years old. <laughs> so what? I know a dirty bird cheater when I see one. Mom? Mom, come down here quick. Elizabeth, what's wrong? Why are you wearing a holy cow's t-shirt? I don't know how to say this delicately, but give me your bra. What? Mom, it's like this. I told Jimmy if they needed me, I'd play. And Ron Rodocker has to leave at a quarter to three. Oh, right, he has that big show on the radio. Mother, it's called the Hog Auction Hour. Oh. Mom, your bra? Honey, I don't understand. Why do you need my bra? Mom, your bra. Elizabeth, I do not have I'm a not bra. wearing a bra, okay? It's no big deal. Let me borrow yours so that if I play, Chip and Dale don't go flying all over the field. Chip and Dale? Yeah, you know, Chip and Dale. <laughs> you, you've named them? Of course. Haven't you? No! Wait a minute, what do you mean you're not wearing a bra? Oh, you, you can leave, leave Mom. Please, like don't that. start. Please, your bra. What a mother does for her daughter. <laughs> Keep going, Mom. You're doing great. Elizabeth, be quiet. Is anyone watching? Sure. I'm selling tickets. What? I'm just kidding. Don't kid about that. Bum, bum, bum. Ba dun dun da. Elizabeth! Jeez, okay, okay. Glad that's finally over with here. You know, you really don't have to bundle up like that. Of course I do. One of us has to be properly dressed in public. Thanks. Honey, I'm sorry, but... But what? Well, you always do things differently. Well, I had to. The role of the perfect child was already taken. What do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. Ruthie did everything right. I do everything wrong. So why do I get to live and she had to die? Elizabeth, what are you saying? I'm saying what everyone else has been saying. Oh, what a shame it had to be Ruthie, the golden child. Poor Marlis, she stuck with Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I had no idea you felt that way. Of course losing Ruthie was a horrible blow, but no one is sorry it wasn't you. You're my daughter too. I love you just as much. Do you? Yes. Yes! Uh, Marlis! Marlis! Where, where's where's Mar oh, Marlis? Marlis! Marlis! We got them out in the ninth! But I don't think they're giving us much respect. They sent out one of Ron Rodocker's collies to bat, and that dang dog got a hit too! But she didn't stop at first base, and they called her out. And that'll teach them. Thanks for the updates. All right, but it's the bottom of the ninth! Our last chance! I guess I better go see if they need me. Mom? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to dump all that on you. My counselors tell me that I have to be honest with my feelings, and I don't know how to explain it, but I've just been feeling so isolated, alone, forgotten. I have had no one to talk to since Ruthie died. You have me and your dad. You know that. No, I didn't know that. You were too wrapped up in your own grief. You built a shrine to her. Everyone did. But her teachers were my teachers. Her friends were my friends. Everybody compared me to her. And I am not her. And I'm really sorry I'm not. I'm really sorry that I'm not as pretty, I'm not as smart, I'm not as talented. I'm sorry that I am here and she's not. 
I am not sorry you're alive. I'm your mother. I love you. I'm sorry I distanced myself from you that much. I never intended to. Mom, I know you didn't mean to ignore me. You built a wall to cope with your grief, and I turned to things that weren't good for me. I'm sorry, Ruthie. Hmm. Mom, two things. One, don't go on being sorry. Learn and move on. I learned that in rehab. And two, you just called me Ruthie. I did? <laughs> hey, it's cool, Mom. That's the best thing I've been called in a long time. Base is loaded, Marlis! Base is loaded! We have never, ever done that, even when we cheated in practice by ourselves! <laughs> Paul and Saul struck out, then Timothy and Luke walked, and Leviticus got hit right in the coconut. Is he all right? Of course he's all right! He's delirious! It's bases loaded and two outs, Marlis! Come on! You want to go watch the end of the game? I'd rather continue our talk, if you don't mind. Sure. Feels good. <laughs> Your counselor tells me you're doing wonderfully. 30 days now, clean and sober. As we say in the rehab game, no booze, no pills, no running from life or loss of life. When did you get so wise and so strong? Come on, Mom. I'm not strong. You're not strong to turn to drugs like I have. You were strong to stop. I guess so. I'm proud of you, as proud as I ever was of Ruthie. And I'm sorry I never really told you that before. Yesterday is already past. Children learn their lessons fast. Down the lane, a woman mourns all the love she's lost, trading time for self. Now she's Pondering the cost. What is that, a song? Mom, don't you recognize that? No. It's one of Ruthie's poems. Ruthie's? Mm-hmm. I saved all of them in the Josie and the Pussycats lunchbox in the top shelf of my closet. Anyway, how about I show them to you tonight? And as a special one-time offer, I will recite them for you. How does that sound? That sounds wonderful, honey. That sounds wonderful. Mom, I know this has been hard on the both of us, but we have to stop feeling sorry for ourselves. Don't worry. I'll show you the way. <laughs> Follow me. Slow roller hit a gopher hole, spun away from the fielder, and we got a run! Go first, go first. Only gopher ball I'll ever hit! Ezekiel fell asleep at the plate. He's got that condition, you know. Anyway, he's snoring at the plate. We're all yelling. We're screaming. <laughs> the other team is laughing so hard they can't see straight. The ball hits Ezekiel's bat, and he wakes up, and the ball drops in for a hit! It's six to two, and numbers comes up. Well, the pitcher and the catcher, they have this big meeting. And numbers on the very first pitch pops one up to the shortstop. When the ball hits a low fly crow, and it drops. The ball and the crow. Now, numbers is running at first as fast as he can, but he trips on his own feet. Now he's crawling to first base as fast as he can. We're going crazy. The shortstop throws the first before numbers can get there, but he throws the crow instead of the ball. One tipped off crow. The crow is squawking. We are squawking. And everybody's safe. The runner scores. It is six to three with the bases still loaded at two outs. It's six to three. Bases loaded at two outs. I can't take this. So now what? Elizabeth, you're up. Oh, me? Yes, you. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. I'm oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh.
my sign. Oh my God. I mean, sir, or, or ma'am, or whatever. My prayer was answered. You do exist. Wow. I'm overwhelmed. How did you find time to perform a miracle for me? I feel so, so grateful, so humble, so Stupid! I feel insignificant and special at the same time. Is that how I'm supposed to feel? Is that how this works? I don't know. I'm new to this burning bush business. Okay, we won. You exist. <clears throat> you know, I really didn't know that. <laughs> but seriously, I am stunned you had the time for me. I mean, your schedule, the famines and the earthquakes and all, and you must have worked really hard. A crow? Wow. Really good stuff. Very impressive. And what you did with Elizabeth, my baby. I learned a lot today. I learned you listen. And I've learned I need to listen. Thank you for giving me the time to do that. And I promise I will stop feeling sorry for myself about Ruthie and live my life for the present. Thank you for the time I had with her. She's yours now. But I am still a mom. And I am going to stop wondering why I lost a daughter and be grateful that I found a daughter. <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am? Ma'am? Yes? Are you with the church softball league? Yes, why? I got over here as soon as I got the call. The call? Yeah, the call you guys are playing a game. Yes, we were playing a game, a very important game. The Holy Cows won. Holy cow's one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. No. Wow, that is scary. I know. Uh, well, uh, sorry I didn't get to you earlier and couldn't get you the message. Oh, I don't think I could take any more messages. You see, my office is in charge of scheduling for this league, and my boss, Jesus, well, he felt sorry for you guys and <laughs> saw, your, saw your record and, well, took it upon himself to schedule you one more chance to win. I'm, I'm sorry, you've got me confused. I don't understand. 
This season, your season, ended last week. This game should never have been played. It should never have been played? It's an unsanctioned, unofficial game. An unofficial game? Lady, the game doesn't count. Doesn't count? But we won! The holy cows won! Look, whatever, lady, listen. Uh, I'll, I'll tell my boss, it'll make him feel really good, but it's still an unofficial game. It doesn't count. Hey, look at it this way. At least y'all got some great exercise, right? Have a nice day. Doesn't count? What was that? I thought we had this all worked out. You and me, the sign, you exist. But the man said that this wasn't a real game. So is this a real sign? Do you exist or not? What's the answer? Do I have to come up with the answer? Is that the answer? Come on, Mom. We're all waiting for you. All right, honey, I'm coming. Hey, Mom. Yes? Who are you talking to just now? Someone in charge of the game. Someone who makes the rules. Ah. I don't understand. <laughs> Why? I'm not sure I do either. But I've got a lifetime to figure it out. Hmm.